know, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of, of anything that happened to me, right? Like, it's who I am and it's my story and I can't change that. Can you tell me a little bit about this gala and this award that you are receiving? Thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, we're, uh, my family's being honored tomorrow night at the uh, Karen Foundation's annual New York City Gala, which um, that's Karen as in C-A-R-O-N, not the name of a woman, but um, there's always some confusion there. Yeah, so we're being given the Richard J. Karen Award of Excellence, which is not even about me, you know, like it's really, it's really about my family and it's been a it's been a crazy year for me, obviously, but I'm just excited that we're gonna kind of shift the spotlight over to my family because they they were with me through some pretty pretty dark times, and so this is really just a night to celebrate them and some of the philanthropic work they've done for the organization that shared my life, and we're expecting a a really good turnout. And, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a party. I'm pumped. Can you tell me a little bit about your family and how um, you know they've supported you over these last 10 years specifically in your sobriety journey? Yeah, yeah, and even before that, I mean, look, my, my parents have been married for 40 years, are the best, they're my heroes. You know, my dad's a total legend and my mom is like the most helpless person I've ever met. Um, and then I am, uh, I'm one of five siblings, so I have a half brother, Rob, who's, you know, um, older. And, uh, and then it's me, Catherine, Matt, and Rachel. And, you know, each of them have taken on a different, you know, kind of responsibility in supporting me throughout the ten, last 10 years. And I think, you know, for me, and I don't know how much you know about like addiction recovery and mental illness and a lot of the things that we're finally like shining a light on in this country, um, it's oftentimes lost that the family pay, plays such a critical role, you know, so for me to be going through this really challenging time in my life and trying to get sober and knowing that I had their love there for me um, was was huge. And when I talk to families today, being on the other side, I just try to communicate to them that even if you don't think your loved one hears you, just keep telling them you love them, keep telling them you're there for them because ultimately, like deep down inside in their spirit, they, they hear it and they know that to be true. So yeah, I'm super grateful for for all of them and, and obviously like, you know, they're married and people have married into this thing, so grateful for them. And then obviously like Keisha, my fiance, grateful for her, it takes a village to kind of, you know, get to where I am and I'm a lot of people I have to thank for that. Yeah, I was gonna say what was the biggest piece of advice you would give to families when they, you know, ask about how to, you know, support a loved one, would you say no. the reminding them that you love them? Yeah, and then it's also just, you know, getting professional help. It's like anything else. I mean, you look at, you know, cancer, you look at heart disease, you look at these other illnesses that are just killing people left and right. And if you are given a, uh, you know, a diagnosis from your doctor, you're going to follow their direction. So it's very much the same, right? Like get in front of a professional and allow them to help um, guide you through the process. You posted some pretty epic throwback photos in honor of your 10 year sobriety um, anniversary. Um, what would you tell the kid in those pictures if you could go back and talk to him? You have no idea what is about to happen. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I mean, it's crazy to think about. I was just, uh, I mean, it's no secret, right? Like I love, I love to party. Um, I love to party and, you know, I, uh, it took what it took. I mean, I would, I, I say it all the time, but kind of like this whole idea of keep going and kind of you're worth it and change is possible. They're all very like almost cliche um, things to say, but they're true. I think the other thing that I would, you know, that I'm really passionate about, and I really look at even just recently in, in, in the media, right? Like yesterday was three years since Mac Miller died of an overdose. You know, we saw Michael K. Williams pass who, you know, it's definitely someone around the, the New York City recovery community um, and all signs are pointing to an overdose there. So, you know, um, people that struggle with this thing are super talented. And uh, if you get it and you get sober and you're able to kind of harness those talents, you can do whatever you want in the world. And that's really something that I've learned. Um, obviously, through the show, you've developed a whole other 
following. Um, I know you've been working as an addiction specialist for a while, but is there like a commonly asked question that like you get from it? Do you get people reaching out to you like who are fans of the show? And it's like a commonly asked question people reach out to you for help and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just walking down the street right now, someone someone identified with my story and really had no interest in talking about the show, but wanted to talk to me about sobriety and recovery and just, you know, let me know that they were super inspired by, you know, me being able to share this story on such a public uh, level. And the truth of it is like, you know, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed of, of anything that happened to me, right? Like it's who I am and it's my story and I can't change that. So uh, the thing that I get the most, honestly, Sarah, is, is this whole idea Yes, people that reach out all day, every day. And the people that reach out the most are not mom and dad. It's the siblings of people who have a brother or sister that's struggling. And they just really, like you just said, they just want to know the first step in, in, in helping someone. And uh, to those people, I try to write back. I mean, it, it can be a lot, but um, just in volume. But it's certainly something that has resonated with quite a, with quite a few people.